Welcome to what would happen if Vladimir Putin forgot to take his antidepressants or if Kim Jong-un noticed one of his citizens was well nourished with a unique haircut. A nuclear apocalypse for the whole family to enjoy. I load into my 4 year old game file and I immediately notice that younger me installed mods to make the protagonist have a great ass. I make the brave decision to play the entire playthrough in third person for related reasons. I then make an even braver decision to drink radiated water. I'm not going to let nuclear contamination stop me from sipping on God's sweet precious nectar. I make my way into the wasteland with hot Pilates mum swagger. I come across a guy sitting by a campfire complaining about food poisoning which paralleled to nuclear fallout seems kind of minor but I guess tummy aches are pretty inconvenient. I think I ate a bad can of meat. <sighs> okay, it's got my guts all in a twist. You can probably smell it from there. He tells me about a meat factory where he bought the questionable food. It's across the entire wasteland. My mission becomes clear. I must visit this factory and get to the bottom of this food poisoning incident. I'm pretty sure the main quest line revolves around my newborn baby being abducted by psychopaths, but this seems like a far more pressing issue. I will not stand for tummy aches. A short way into my journey, I come across a train station where Nicky Louder and his boys are chilling. These poor souls were lost to nuclear radiation and all that's left behind is a radiated walking brain dead corpse that would make anybody sick to their stomach to look at. Basically a horde of British girls without makeup. While scavenging for supplies, I realise my avatar is some kind of slutty cyborg. I can't wait for Elon Musk to stop building ugly cars and tweeting so he can focus his attention on what really matters. I set off into the wasteland once more, determined to complete my objective. I realise I can level up some perk points. There's lots of great options like strength and shooting, but I invest all my points into lead belly so I can drink water without getting radiation poisoning. Not even a nuclear apocalypse will stop my thirst being quenched by the sweet supple liquefied juice of the heavens. As I continue forward, I spot a threat. A large mutant guarding some sort of structure, so I give it a wide berth. Little did I know this was a huge mistake as I stumble into some giant mosquitoes. They proceed to surround and inappropriately touch me like I was a hot babe dancing in a nightclub and they were a gaggle of horny Indian men. I realise I'm also severely underprepared and I'm losing a fight that I initially thought I'd definitely win. Slap my ass and call me Mother Russia. With all the different creatures roaming the wasteland, I did not expect mosquitoes to be the reason I died today. I proceed to have my face pierced by a stinger and die a reasonably unheroic death. It becomes clear that if I'm going to survive the long journey to the meat factory, I'll need better armor and loads more bullets. I head to Diamond City, a safe haven for travelers to trade, laugh, live and learn. I approach the arms dealer and buy myself some new armor. In traditional gaming fashion, the female armor barely covers anything, but at least I got the modest pelican goggles. I spend all my money on the new fit and don't get any bullets, which was a massively questionable decision. I need to make money and quickly, so I do what all disenfranchised individuals do when they're in dire situations such as this. I lace my boots up and get a job. Just kidding, I proceed to steal things. I break into the science center and oh my god, does this game have some crazy mythical creatures. From mutants to giant mosquitoes to female scientists, what next? I head upstairs and start racking items, but somehow they spot me. I'm forced to kill them both with the help of my trusty loyal dog. I take all of their items to sell, which in turn undresses them and makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. I never thought I'd be the kind of guy to undress dead women, but when lab coats are selling for 7 caps each, it's free real estate. I head over to the local bar, which is a hub for wasteland wanderers like myself to drink and share stories of their adventures. As I walk in, I see this guy robbing the place. Oh wait, no, he's just a patron, my bad. I have a word with the big girl and he tells me of a vault that has remained untouched and fully functional throughout the entire apocalypse. An untouched vault is something I simply have to see and could be a great opportunity to earn some caps. Before I leave, I steal every single item from the motel rooms. Are you really playing a Bethesda game if you're not stuffing your pockets with ceramic bowls? I make the short journey over to Vault 81 and head inside the cave. They communicate with me via the intercom, but refuse to open the vault doors unless I bring them three fusion cores. Honestly, a pretty expensive dowry, but the sunk cost fallacy is in full effect. There's no way I'm not getting inside now. I sell all my stolen goods to the arms dealer because apparently he equally loves military grade equipment and a random assortment of crockery. I proceed to buy my first fusion core with the acquired funds. I then head back to my settlement, which I'm neglecting more than the UN neglects Palestine. I mean, look at the structure Younger Pelican built for the community. It might not have walls, but it's got heart. I head into my old pre-war house and there's a suit of power armor that I prepared earlier. This is a game changer. We'll be able to cross the wasteland with ease and reach the meat factory, just kidding, the suit has low power. 
Wow, how rapidly anticlimactic. Now I know what it's like for girls when they have sex with me. The silver lining is I get a fusion core from the suit and now we only need one more. I figure while I'm here, I might as well check in with the troops. I have a chat with Mama Murphy and she straight up asks me for drugs. Look, if the world got nuked, I'd probably dabble in a little crack as well, so I let her know that I'll keep my eye out. I begin the great search for the final fusion core. I battle through a cave filled with giant mutated mole rats, I search dozens of degraded homes, and then stumble across some drugs. I figure why not get Mama Murphy off her tits? Best case she gives us a cheap laugh or two, and worst case she dies and it's one less mouth to feed. I give her the gear, and I love that a little quest complete thing pops up. Congratulations, you're enabling an old woman's drug dependency. She proceeds to give me some insightful advice. It's bright. So bright against the dark alleys it walks. Wow, thank you so much. But if I wanted to hear a junkie impart unhinged wisdom on me, I'd go down to my local train station and start handing out cigarettes to anyone without teeth. I realise that my cute little addict community are going to be absolutely no help, and so I head back out into the wasteland. I always loved the bases that were built up on the highways in this game for some reason. When I was a kid, I lived next to a golf course, and the boys and I built this base hidden in some bushes right near the 16th hole. It was some high-tier engineering. We stuck leaves and branches onto wooden panels of the base. You couldn't see us at all, it was straight out of the Vietnam War. The golfers couldn't quite see the green from the tee off, and so when they'd hit their balls over the ridge, we'd steal them. It highly amused us watching them look around for ages like idiots. Even funnier was taking their balls and putting them in the hole. They'd search around for a while and then eventually look in there and think they got a hole in one. They'd cheer and be so happy. We were the bloody Make-A-Wish Foundation for middle-aged white guys with dying marriages. The jokes aside though, I like my women like I like my golf game. In the mid 70s with a slight handicap. I clear an entire banded space but sadly find no fusion cores. I then come up with a genius plan. I return to Diamond City and begin harvesting all of their fresh produce. For some reason, fruit picking doesn't count as stealing. Did you know in Australia, we genuinely force visitors to do three months of unpaid farm work in order to get their temporary citizenship? It's technically not slavery though, because we're not allowed to use shackles and whips anymore. Humanitarian rights take the efficiency and fun out of everything, I swear. I proceed to sell their own fruit back to them for a handsome profit and purchase my final fusion core. Vault 81 agrees to open the door. I love the old Bethesda games so much. This started out as a mission to cure some lad's food poisoning, which I still vow to do, but now I'm going back into a vault. They're super welcoming, and my booty mod seems to have worked for anyone wearing a vault suit, which is superb. I head deep into the vault, and some ginger kid offers me a tour of the area for 10 caps. I trust gingers about as much as I trust YouTubers who promote cryptocurrency, and so I try and finesse him into giving me the tour for free. The dodgy little malacca tells me to take a hike, and then I notice something. He too has a tight, firm little attitude when it comes to outsiders haggling with his tour prices. Not getting the tour turns out to be a huge hindrance as I'm meant to report to the medical staff, but I can't find a doctor to treat me anywhere. I feel like I'm trying to get an abortion in Alabama. I proceed to explore this underground community. They're growing non-mutated fruit down here, which naturally I harvest all for myself. I don't care if these people go hungry. Plus, I already thought of a way to solve both world hunger and poverty ages ago. You just feed the poor to the hungry. So far, I've made no caps in Vault 81, and so I decide to distract myself by getting my hair dyed. Nothing like a little makeover to help you forget your financial decisions. Speaking of financial decisions, I'm proud to announce my official partnership with Saint Caramel Coin. Saint Caramel Coin is the world's first biracial Christian cryptocurrency. No, this, is, this is a stupid bit. Let's move on. I walk out feeling great, but then the hairdresser slaps me with this. You look like you could use a trim. Negging his clients seconds after they pay him is a bold business strategy. I look for the ginger kid to let him know that they have hair dye down here, but I can't find the lad anywhere. I continue searching the vault and eventually find the good doctor. He asks if I can give him a blood sample. I try and swindle him into paying me for it, but my persuasion attempt fails. The repercussions of putting all my perk points into lead belly so I can drink radiated water. No regrets. He takes my blood and then it all kicks off. Apparently some child's dying and people actually care, so I guess the child's white, collar family raised. It's actually the ginger kid who didn't even give me a tour, so I'm honestly not that motivated to save him. That being said, I desperately need caps. The cure is allegedly somewhere in this hidden secret part of Vault 81. I proceed to kill like 50 mutated mole rats, desecrate numerous grave sites for human bones to sell, and eventually meet a robot that has developed a cure for the inbred ginger kid. 
He's designed a razor that shaves off every strand of hair. Nah, he's got an actual cure and this is so exciting. I run my toned little ass back to the medical bay. The doctor administers the dose and everyone celebrates and is so happy, but I'm not. I didn't get paid. So far, all I've done in Vault 81 is get a haircut, pick fruit, and do my best impression of Doctors Without Borders. On the plus side, the robot asks if she can join my crew, and I agree. On my way out, I swing by the classroom to see what these rugrats are learning about. The teacher asks if I can share some stories of my experiences outside in the big bad world. I tell the kids some exciting tales, like about the time I gave Mama Murphy heroin. I thought I was teaching those kids, but really, those kids were teaching me. I sell all my items to Big Boy and buy all the ammunition I can afford. I then set off into the wasteland, this time ever so slightly more ready than before. I take a big lustful drink of the Lord's Tears to replenish my health as I realise unironically this perk is actually kind of useful. It's not going to be an easy journey and we'll likely have to murder many souls, but in the words of Joseph Stalin, death is the solution to all problems. I come across some traders travelling the wasteland looking to sell their wares. They've got a cute little three-headed cow that carries their belongings. It's very wholesome, but I only have nine caps. My journey so far is going pretty swell until I suddenly experience grade A acute PTSD. A swarm of giant mosquitoes begins attacking me. I pull out my handgun and start shooting the bugs, but I fear the worst. How will I ever find a cure to homies food poisoning with these mutated insects penetrating my face with their stingers? Then, like a metal angel, my robot companion begins attracting all of the mosquitoes like he was an African child and he proceeds to take the damage for me. It's bloody inspirational. Maybe Vault 81 wasn't a waste of time after all, I've gained a mate. And to replenish my health, I swallow several mouthfuls of our divine creator's translucent liquor and continue forward on my courageous mission. The journey through the wilderness is long and hard, but I push forward with my left analog stick. I locate a military armory, which should be the perfect place to replenish my ammunition. The place is surrounded by traps, and I proceed to eat more landmines than a Vietnamese farmer. I make my way inside the facility, and I'm immediately attacked by a posse of ghouls. They really remind me of fentanyl users. Surely someone makes a mod where they shout things at you while they attack. You got a smoke, cuz? Spare some change, Adlai? You got a staring problem, bruv? I'll stab yous all. Give me your shoes, you Tesla dog. I take everything I can and proceed to undress yet another woman's corpse, but her clothes are expensive, so it'd be a poor financial decision not to. Maybe Ted Bundy just really enjoyed finessing the secondhand women's clothes market. We were all so quick to judge. I locate the key from the armory, and inside is another power armor suit. This time, unlike my mobile phone whenever I'm lost and need to use Google Maps, it's actually fully charged. I run out into the wasteland as the rain pours down, it's extremely cinematic and epic until you remember I'm doing all of this because some guy got mild food poisoning. I travel for eternity, or more accurately, for about 12 minutes. I see mutated dolphins, I see my ex living her best life in a half-destroyed house, and finally I arrive at the meat factory. It's time to solve this mystery once and for all. I take off my power armor because I respect etiquette and I walk in on a conversation between the owner and a customer who's complaining that she felt sick after eating the meat. I'm not saying these customers have bad situational awareness skills, but this meat shop isn't exactly sanitary. Like when I buy a kebab at 12am from a street vendor after a night out, I know full well that the real nuclear fallout will be in my toilet 45 minutes later. I talk to Theodore, who assures me that everything here is by the book. He tells me of a small mole rat infestation, and I offer to help him clear it out for a few caps. I head out the back and there's some robots cutting up all kinds of different meat, but nothing too suspicious. I mean, it is a nuclear apocalypse, so I don't think free-range organic raised Wagyu beef was ever on the menu. I head deep into the factory and make a disturbing discovery. The place is infested with ghouls. They're a way higher level than me, so this part was kind of terrifying. Almost as terrifying as the time I accidentally dated two girls at once. So the first girl I misplayed my hand with pretty badly. I came in way too strong. We went out for drinks once, and the next day it was her birthday. So naive little pelican drops flowers off to her house, which I could instantly tell didn't go down too well from her facial expression. She asked me how do you know where I live, which is not what you want to hear coming out of a girl you like's mouth. I felt like a bit of a stalker. I said sorry, my mutual mate told me your address, and the whole thing was unbelievably awkward. The following week, I text her a couple of times, but no reply. Ah well, we live and we learn. Don't show up to women's houses unexpectedly. I begin seeing this other girl, and I play it a lot cooler. For example, I don't show up to her house. 
This girl's really Christian, so I decide I'll take it slow as I don't want to piss God off. I take it too slow and she stops texting me. I'm thinking, shit, I'm just striking out left, right and center here. What's a young bird to do? I proceed to play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and jerk off for the next couple of weeks and then suddenly both text me on the same day wanting to catch up. I flick on the TV and the weather forecast is on and the weatherman tells me it's raining bitches. I don't know what to do so I just go on a date with each girl and it was lovely. I played it cool and both dates went superbly. I'd finally done it. One warm summer's night I go to send some goodnight text messages. Cute and thoughtful. I write a beautifully crafted message, but I made sure to keep it generic so I could send it to both of their numbers. Instead of the message going out to each of them separately, it starts a group chat with the three of us. Let's just say playing the Fallout games is the second time I've been the victim of a nuclear apocalypse. I learn that old mate Theodore has been cutting up the ghouls and using them for meat. This is technically cannibalism and likely why everyone's been feeling so ill. I almost never agree with cannibalism and I will not stand for such malpractice and so I head over to murder Theodore. I begin beating him like I was his alcoholic father. He's like, look, don't kill me, let's become business partners. I stop and think for a moment, but then agree I could use the money. Obviously this guy is some kind of genius marketer as he's got everybody in the wasteland eating people, so yeah, I make a shrewd business decision. Cannibalism is clearly a profitable trade. Excited to tell my friend the good news, I run back over and visit Mr. Tummy Ache. I chat with him and he's still yapping about gross vomiting and farting due to the questionable meat. I'm really sorry about the smell. I'll try not to barf again until you leave. I can't have this guy besmirching the good name of Theodore's Meats to every traveller who passes by as I'm now a major shareholder. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, hit like. Check out my other channel, Papa Pelly, if you're looking for more videos to watch. I love you.